Today I have Christy Kinley and Houston Goodwin from 97 Display, whose mission is to empower martial arts and fitness businesses to more effectively impact their communities through internet marketing. So thanks to both of you for your time today and welcome to the show. Thanks. We're excited to be here. Yeah, awesome. Really excited. Yeah. Very, very cool to meet you and appreciate you carving out a little bit of time for us. So to start off, I'm really curious how we got here. So when you think about your individual visionary integrator journeys, uh, Houston, why don't you start us off? Did you start off in the visionary role? Were you kind of doing both? What was the situation when, uh, when you started off? Yeah, so we, we kind of have like an interesting path. Um, I actually started uh, like running the sales team at 97 Display. And uh, a few years ago, I was kind of working my way up uh, through the company and having some success, I decided, hey, EOS is something I had heard about and had been familiar with with other companies, but never really worked with an implementer before. And so we started that journey. And obviously, you know, we were about 30 employees at the time. And, and this was a much a very big change for us. And so really what it did was when we kind of got in and we looked at the visionary integrator seat, originally, I was kind of sitting in the integrator seat. And it was just like, hey, this isn't going to work, right? Like, right. this isn't this isn't the setup. I'm going to do terrible. Uh, and so we need to make some adjustments. And so we made some pretty big shifts in the company. And um, Christy at the time was running support, and and we had worked really well together. And so she kind of has those innate integrator qualities. And so um, maybe like two years ago, we just kind of made a decision: if we're going to move forward as a company with EOS, which is what we think is best, uh, right. this is what the structure needs to look like. And so. Um, yeah, so we just started sitting in these roles like two years ago, maybe. So, so bring me inside those initial conversations that the two of you had around, hey, Christy, we, we need to fill this integrator seat. I'm thinking you might be good. How, how did that all go? And Christy, what was your reaction when you first heard that idea? Yeah, um, I th a lot of those conversations, we had the original CEO of the company was sitting in that visionary seat. And like Houston mm -hmm. said, he was in the integrator seat. And the conversations started out of, I was growing out of where I was. So I moved into like a director of ops situation right. and that more aligns with what the integrator is doing and the things Houston hated to do. I was like kind of taking off of his plate right. and then he eventually just like morphed himself into the, the visionary in a sense. Um, so that's kind of how that came about. I don't know if you have anything to sprinkle on that Houston, but, um, that's kind of how, how that went. And I realized that those skill sets, I think. As a young leader, I thought those skill sets of a visionary was what a leader was. So that those visionary skill sets were what I was like aspiring to be. But right. I learned through some years of leadership coaching that the skill set I brought to the table were actually skill sets that could be of a leader as well. And right. I could lean into those and they were just as valuable, if not maybe more valuable. So I think a lot of that journey is that that's kind of how that journey went for me um, is once I started to realize that those things were what I could lean into and what I love to do, it kind of became a spot where the visionary wasn't what I aspired to be. It's what I aspired to like come alongside, if that makes sense. Absolutely. So, yeah. so Houston, did you have concerns as, as Christy kind of moved into that role that you'd been filling and, and, you know, or as you're looking the other way, as you're thinking about stepping into that visionary seat, uh, how, how were you feeling about all that? Yeah. So I think, I mean, I, you know, I think one of the things that I was doing early on in the company, cause I came in like post acquisition to the company and I didn't come in in like a top level position, but I've always like, you know, been naturally inclined to to be the leader of whatever I'm in. And I really like doing that. And that's really what I'm passionate about is like developing people. And so when EOS really just helped put like words to, you know, kind of this innate thing that I had learned over, you know, the last decade or so in work, um, really for me, my vision was always bigger than just 97. And so those initial conversations with Christy were kind of like, Hey, this is what I need. And you know, you, you the book is called rocket fuel. I was calling it like the secret sauce, right? This is like mm -hmm. the superpower for me to be able to accomplish things that I want to accomplish in life is to have this like other side to the coin. Mm -hmm. And this is a really good testing ground. And so we started with 97 and now, um, you know, two years later, we actually have three software companies under our umbrella, um, that we're the VI over, um, which has been really fun and it's growing very fast. Um, and so okay, for so me, I gotta, yeah, stop, I gotta stop you there. So expand on that for me a second. So you've got three different companies now that you're each playing these same roles in each of these three companies. 
Yeah, so this is a little new. We're working with our implementer on how to do that. But the 97 display is owned by a, a large mother company that just owns hundreds of software companies. And so in the last year, we've been able to create one and roll a new company under the umbrella where we're kind of sitting as the visionary integrator for those. And then over the next year, um, I think the path moving forward will be to kind of have someone sit in the integrator for the company as we form this, like, you know, the mother, like C-suite level right. company right. Um, and have in in integrators running each individual brand. Uh, but right now, as we're kind of figuring that out, we've just taken over a new company in the past like month. Uh, we're kind of sitting in a lot of seats to to figure it out and roll EOS out to them to get them on the same page. But the truth is, the only way we were able to do that now was, you know, and I think that I saw this in some capacity of I'm I can't do this alone um, because you know visionaries honestly like are great, but I think there's no shortage of great vision, right? It's the is the implementation of that vision and having people bought into it. I always use the example of like, you can go to your local like startup accelerator and hear like, you know, a hundred really good pitches of vision and 99 of those will turn into nothing. So, um, so vision isn't hard to find. Uh, and that's my strength and what I'm passionate about. And so really w two years ago, when we started the conversation. It was more of like, Hey, let's look at this as like a testing ground and an investment into the long term future of um, I'm always going to need an integrator and Christy's always going to need a visionary. And how could, if we could work really well together, that's a really rare and unique, like valuable skill set that we would have that will propel us. That's bigger than just 97. And now, you know, we have a few companies this with, and even beyond, you know, what that looks like, I think that's like the secret sauce to my, like, Love you know, that. plans to, to move on. Love that. So Christy, you, you, you stepped into the seat. Did you, did you jump into it full time? Did you still have to hang on to another seat? Was there some kind of a transition that happened there? What did that look like? Um, it was relatively full time. I, I had, I typically positioned myself where we both do this really well, where we are always ready for the next opportunity. So it was really positioning myself in a sense where I could shift pretty quickly. So it was full time pretty quick. And what, challenges did that bring with it or did it just kind of mm. click immediately and it was just easy peasy and everything worked the way that the book said it would work or was it like <laughs> ooh, this this piece was hard what was hard if only it was that easy um <laughs> yeah so there was definitely some challenges there but it was there were challenges but i think houston would agree like it almost it was easier than what we thought but it was also harder than we thought in some areas so it, it's an interesting dynamic um i think some of the challenges that I had initially was it's a unique position to be the final say so as the integrator, but I still report to Houston. So there's a weird like challenge of power there mm. of I have to respect my boss's vision and respect my boss's like all the things that come with that. But at the same time, I'm the final decision maker. So that's an, that was an interesting thing that took a little time for me, I feel like to even settle in of where's my place with this. Like that, that was an interesting piece of being an integrator. Um, and I think another challenge was acting like speaking for each other and acting as one versus acting right. as two. Um, the, the closest thing I can, I can equate it to is like when you first get married and you're like, Oh, it's not just about me anymore. There's like this other person that comes. And so it's like similar to that sense of everything I did, I had to communicate it back to Houston, everything he did, he had to communicate it back to me so that we were always on the same page. And that was definitely a struggle. Um, we actually hired a, what we called a marriage counselor. <laughs> it was the joke. It was really? a marriage, but he's a, a leadership coach. So for about the first, I don't know, four to six months ish, we had him once a month where we would just like sit down with him and work out those issues um, and I mean, we still have like little hiccups and blips, but I think those were some of the bigger challenges was just that power struggle and, and, and the communication was different. What was the biggest thing you learned from that coach? Um, hmm. I mean, I think for me, uh, distinctively, I remember when we first did the, whatever the assessment is with EOS, where you kind of get the whole company to take a test to see like where you're the at. Organizational for the checkup. Yeah. Yes. Organizational checkup. So for me, I remember distinctly being like, okay, cool. Our, like our, you know, our meeting pulse definitely will be low. Like this will be low. Our, our accountability trial will be low, but the vision is going to be 10 out of 10 because in my head, the vision is so clear. There's no way anyone works here and doesn't have that vision. And the vision was like a four overall. And for me, that was just like a big wake up call of like, oh man, what I am doing is not distilling down into like the everyday person good at all. 
And so I think, um, you know, one of the things that the, um, the coach helped us with was to give me um, appropriate times to be able to just like, cause sometimes I just like to get on a whiteboard and not know where I'm starting and just kind of like go and say, here's everything in my head and, you know, kind of brain dump everything. And at first I was doing that not in a super healthy way. So at work, we termed it like a Houston hurricane where I would kind of come into mm -hmm. a meeting and kind of just derail it with a whole nother idea or see a solution to a problem that they didn't see and just kind of like, you know, say, well, this is what you should do and then kind of leave. Um, and so then we kind of said, okay, well, that's not good. We need to go through the integrator and use EOS. And then that kind of had me be isolated and feel like, well, I'm not getting to, to do that. And so what we really worked through was like having our same page uh, once a month meetings and then having like meetings where I can come and say, okay, this is like my safe space to like talk about things that may, ne I may hate them by the time I'm done talking about them, but at least I can like get them out and verbally process them. Yeah, and that was helpful brain. for us. Yeah. Also too, like add on that, having a third party coach for those first like four to six months was really helpful. Maybe not even, I mean, of course he taught us things, but just to have someone sit in because of, I have the integrator mind and he has the visionary mind. So it's like, it's already hard to level with one another at that sense. So having a third party that um, could kind of see both sides and help us just level with one another was really helpful. So I would, I would just kind of add that to also what Houston said for sure. So how long did it take? How long did it take before you felt like, you know, sort of the, the awkwardness or the friction and kind of figuring each other out and kind of how to m match up? How long did that take before you felt like it really started to crank and you started to hit your stride? Man, we're still, we're still working through it. No, um, I mean, we've got, we, there's always things to work on. I think, I think that, uh, you know, one of the things that, that came up when we implemented EOS, which I think is popular, especially because we timed this right around COVID and we're in a software company. And so there's like the great resignation. So we actually, we, we don't really typically experience a lot of employee attrition, but we actually like churned like five or six staff over a six month period and a 30 person company, which is a pretty huge chunk sure. because people saw that we're kind of like buying into this and that kind of like, you know, that, that made enough, like rough the waters up enough for us. Like, okay, we don't really have time to concentrate on what's not working and not. Cause we've got to move forward together because there's like some real things going on. And then, you know, we kind of got through that. And then, you know, towards the end of 2021, early 2022, um, it's just like, it's like uh, gradually then all of a sudden. So it's like you make little gradual improvements and then all of a sudden, like now we've uh, been working with this new company for the last like 30, just like 30 days. And uh, we were just talking at our, we had our like same page day last week. And uh, one of the things we do is like rate, like rank and rate the last month, like scale of one to 10, 10 being the best we've ever been. So not perfect. And one being the worst we've ever been. So not like terrible where are we at? And we both said, Hey, I think we're like at the height of our game right now because you know, now it's, it's really, it, it's been an interesting challenge where it's like, okay, here are things that I can't even be involved in and you have to go do those. And then I'm going to be over here and do that. And we have to kind of know what's going on, but not spend an hour, like re like re like regurgitating. This is everything that happened. Right. So it's kind of like trusting each other to stay in our lanes and, and do things appropriately. And um, that's been really fun to see because it's definitely been an improvement over the, over the last two years. Christy, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I would say as far as like surface working together, I would say that we kind of hit our stride like three to six months in ish, but there was deeper things that we were trying to work through. Um, so I would say on a surface level, three to six months, but I would definitely agree that we've definitely hit our stride within the last probably three to six months here. So that's probably, I don't know, what, two years into the journey, a year and a okay. half into the journey, little, little uh, where it's almost like, almost to the point where it's like, I know where his, his head's at and he knows where my head's at at all times. And it's, we almost could make decisions on each other's behalf and then go back and be like, that's exactly what I would have done. So it's, we've almost, it's removing yourself from the equation being like, okay, what would Houston do? WWHD? <laughs> what would right. Houston do here? And then you can kind of take that. And I know exactly what his answer would be. And then I know what my perspective is and then like make a decision without even having him in the room, if, which is interesting. I love that. I love that. So talk to me about your same page discipline. So I'm hearing once a month, how long are they typically? And all has day. that changed? All day, yeah. They're all day, all day. So where mm -hmm. do you do it? Uh, well, we we usually go off site. We actually used to go off site to a really cool like co-working space, but we actually just um, moved into that co-working space and took it over like three it. months ago. Um, <laughs> so we like 
bought all the furniture and because we were like, man, this is so nice. And so we just moved our whole office there. Um, so, but typically, other than this last time, we actually did it in our office because we're still kind of like searching for the next place. But we have a pretty good setup right now in our office. But typically, it's offsite, and it usually um, starts at like you know nine or ten. So we get in the morning and like handle some emails and stuff, and then we just write a, a issues list up. So we have uh, we use um, ninety, and so we have our own like you know, VI um, channel. So we write up all our issues and kind of what are the things we want to accomplish. And typically we kind of map it out where it's like, okay, we're going to do like two or three hours of IDS and then we'll go do lunch and then we'll come back and look at some to do's that maybe we need to like, you know, maybe there's a specific thing where we need to like set an agenda for an offsite for the team or set up this thing or, you know, tackle this one thing. And, and so I say all day, but typically we wrap up by like, I don't know, two or three uh, okay. Just depending, but we reserve the whole day. We block the right, whole day in right, case we need right. it. Right. Yep. Yep. Have Have you over the time you've been doing that? Have you figured out sort of some things that tend to work better for for each other? Right. So some some of my integrators, I'll hear them say that they know when to discuss a certain type of issue, or they know how to discuss a certain type of issue with their visionary when it's going to be you know, more productive, they'll be more open to it. Mm -hmm. They'll be more, you know, receptive, you know, whatever, whatever the situation may be. Christy, have you kind of learned that or, or Houston, same, same thing. Have you, have you learned something sure. specific about each other that, that seems to work that way? Yeah. I mean, I think there's always tact involved when you're working with that counterpart. Um, but I can't think of anything specifically off the top of my head. I do know when he's in, when he's in, you know, go, 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 go mode. And when he's in, I want to be in front of a whiteboard and just like ideate mode. So I'm very aware of those modes. And, um, when we're in the go, go, go mode, it's like, I'm in execution, like I'm executing mode, mode, mode. And, um, and when he's in whiteboard mode, I can kind of like slow down and then like start to slip in some of the things I'm thinking. So yeah, I would say like those types of situations I've picked up on for sure. Tell me about a time it got really tense. Mm. It gets tense sometimes between the between the two of you, mm -hmm. where you just weren't seeing it the same way. Um, I think so. So one thing that I think early on, um, and one of the reasons why, um, so one of the reasons why it was such a shock to me that the team had, like rated the vision as a four is because like, in my head it's like crystal clear, and I try to like be fairly consistent about like what I say and how I present myself. And I try to like be clear and obviously I've gotten better at that with EOS has been really helpful. Um, but I can, I can remember a, just a few months ago when we were talking about like direction and moving forward. Um, we, it wasn't necessarily that we didn't agree. I think that, I think that in my mind we were on the same page because I'm serious. Like I'm like, my job is a big part of my life and I'm so serious about it and, and this or that. And I think we came to a head where it was like, I don't want to say not like buying into it, but like we kind of came to a point ahead where I was like, okay, we're not acting like we believe this together. And that kind of elicited, like, I'm fairly like a even kill, like not emotional person. And that kind of it, like brought an emotional response for me to be like, Hey, this is serious. And I think when that happened, we kind of got on the same page and Christy was like, Oh, you're actually like, Seriously, you're for real this. about this. Mm. And I was like, how could I communicate this more clearly? And I remember she was like, you honestly couldn't like, you're, you're saying it, but I just like, now I see that you're serious about what you're saying. And, and that was like a, you know, for me, I'm like frustrated. Like what, what does that mean? You know? And then for her, it's like, you know, it takes time to do things. But I think that was our most recent yeah, tense moment. To add to that. I think that, that was a very tense moment of I saw us as the VI of 97 and Houston was seeing us as like the VI for life. Like it was like, it was a much more intense situation. And, and that to me was a turning point too. So it was a very tense week, week and a half. Um, but that was a very big turning point for me too, to say like, oh, what we have is extremely rare. And I guess I didn't understand the weight of how rare it really was. And Houston explaining all that to me was like very helpful to understand those things, but that was a very tense moment. But outside of that, we have disagreements, but we're very great at like disagreeing and committing. So tense, I mean, and we're also pretty 
intense people. Both of us are like, we're, we're both pretty challenging people. So my version of what tense would mean is likely very different from the next person. Cause I don't feel tense is it have to hit something pretty high to be feel tense to me. So, you're, so you're very comfortable being uncomfortable, right? Or so you're, yeah. you know, that's not, that's not like something us that... arguing is a Tuesday. Like we, we argue often, but it's not our, it's not unhealthy arguments, but it's just not seeing eye to eye, disagreeing and committing and be like, yep, we're doing this. And then we walk out and it's over and it doesn't really come back up. So yeah, so in, intense. So, so when you think about, you know, integrator is the tiebreaker, uh, how does that show up in your relationship? I, you know, I think that's an area that we can improve on with mm -hmm. the leadership team. Because mm -hmm. so I was actually just talking to someone who's exiting um, one, one, uh, 97, who's on the leadership team. And, you know, we're doing like, you know, getting feedback and things. And it, it was a good exit. It was, you know, a different life stage and things like that. But one of the things that kind of came out of that was sometimes I'm the I'm still the loudest voice in the room. And it's, it's like, it's um, like an un unintended consequence maybe of just like sometimes sure. being very sure and being very vocal and not and and encouraging like what i want is like for people to disagree and to like argue and battle and then if i don't you know it doesn't go my way that's okay because that's why we have eos but i think um and, and maybe part of it is because we're on the same page as well but like a lot of times if we know we're going into a big issue with the leadership team i'll get with her and be like hey let's same page this before Love because it. I would yeah. not like if I want to make sure that we at least see each other's point of view. So we're not like arguing um, yeah. and like disagreeing so that you're so we, I don't think we've ever had a situation where she's been the tiebreaker against something that I felt strongly about in front of the team. We've done yeah. that always in private. But, yeah, it's like the we don't want the parents arguing in front of yeah, the children. That's so helpful. <laughs> it is so painful when that happens and the vision mm -hmm. are coming to the room and they just go at it for 30 minutes and the rest of the leadership team is just kind of sitting there with their hands crossed watching this tennis match go back and forth and it's just so painful and, and awkward and that's unnecessary right yeah so and i think really, we're very really to hear. we're very intentional about being like if houston's in the room and christy's not we have the exact same brain and if christy's in the room and houston's not we have the, like keeping a, it's not a facade i was going to use the word facade but that's the wrong word but like keeping up the image of we are an amoeba and you can't go to if dad says no, you can't go to mom. She's going to say the same thing. And if mom says no, you can't go to dad. <laughs> so it's like, it's, I think that's really important in front of the leadership team to make sure that they know we are a united front at all times. Even if sometimes we've had it in situations where we walk out of a meeting and I'll message him or he'll message me and be like, I totally disagree with that, but this is why I disagree with it. It's okay that we move forward this way, but the, you know, we don't do it in front of the team, if that makes sense. Love that. That's, that's awesome. So going back to a comment that Christy, I think you made, which was the VI for life. Right. And I sort of heard this as you're, you're moving to these different companies. You know, I, I have leadership teams that you know, I'll see occasionally that are just, they're awesome. They're just like, they're so healthy. They're so talented. They, they're so aligned. They just run fast. They do great things together. And it's a really delicate thing to kind of keep that band together. And they can make some hits, you know, they can roll, they can do some big things. And every once in a while, I'll see one that they'll kind of leave. Maybe they have some kind of an exit. They, they leave a company and sometimes they'll come back together and they'll do it again. And so I'm sort of hearing this VI for life as sort of, you know, the band. You've kind of found your, your, your partner here that, that really harmonizes well with you. And you feel like you can, you can do that. You can, you can put out some hits. Is that, am I reading that right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think so part of that was like you know being able to bring on this other company and say okay cool this is something that i'm selling to like our parent company of mm. traditionally they don't run eos so this is like one job right for to run a company and so it's like hey i'm better as a pair and this is why and so for me it's like i have no interest in like sitting in the integrated role ever again um, regardless of if i stay with the companies that i'm at forever or if i you know do something else or I take over, or, you know, our parent company has a lot of room for us to take over, you know, a hundred companies one day. And it's like, I never had the intention of going back and trying to sit in the integrated role. And one unique thing about visionary integrators that I like is they're not competing roles. So it's not like, you know, I've always been like, well, what's next? And that's really my boss's job. And that's what I'm trying to go after. But 
now that I'm here, and even when I was kind of sitting in the integrated role for a couple months as we were rolling it out, that's what I was saying. It's like, what's next? Like, I got to get out of this. But now that we're here, the what's next is how do we take on more responsibility by either growing the companies or, you know, taking on more companies with us. And right. so there is no, like, if I, if I had an exit, um, I think Christy would remain the integrator and maybe they don't have a visionary. And if Christy exit, I would remain the visionary and replace the integrator. So it's not like either person is like gunning after the other's job. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's a, that creates like a long-term, like a long-term like vision of keeping the band together because bands break apart because the backup singer wants to be the lead singer, you know, in a lot of cases and things like True. that. And so I think we've, we've found a good, like, you know, mesh point where we're both happy with the roles we have. Yeah. hundred percent. I'm, I'm curious, uh, Houston, I noticed your visionary score is a 91. Your integrator score is a 54 on the flip side, Christy, your integrator score is a 93, your visionary score is 52. So that tells me, you know, there's probably a lot of complimentary fit there, which is great, which, you know, it, it you don't have this kind of fighting for the wheel, a tendency to want to grab the same stuff and, and run with it. Uh, but a visionary 91, sitting in that integrator seat, Houston, for a, for a while, what was most frustrating to you about that? Um, well, I mean, for me, I think, like, and I don't know how to do the, the tools, but originally when I took that test when I was sitting in the integrator seat, I was scored like an 80 uh, because I was kind of like just, you know, white knuckle grit in your teeth, like, let's get it done. And I yep. think I've been successful sitting in seats that maybe aren't right for me just to, like, say, okay, to get to the next step, this is what I have to do. And so I actually probably enjoyed it because we needed it. Um, we really didn't have that structure. And so it wasn't, it wasn't bad. Well, I just lose patience on management. Mm. Um, and so it's like, if I tell you something and that's why I like having one report because it's like taking a long time. It's like, Hey, I say something, we're on the same page. You go off. I don't have to worry about it anymore. That's kind of how I manage everybody. And that just doesn't, that isn't the healthiest way to manage people. But for me, I have like very, um, short patience with people where it's like, Hey, if you say you're going to do something and then you go off, like I'm, I'm the opposite of a micromanager and I'm okay for you to come and say you need help. But you know, there's a reason why LMA isn't on the visionary seat, I think. And it is on the integrator because that is a needed piece, like managing people, you know, not necessarily micromanaging, but more than I'm willing to do. Um, and I really just, that really frustrates me from a personal level just because I see everybody through the lens of how I see the world and I see the right. world through like, I hate having management. Like I don't like being managed or, you know, I just like being told this is where you need to be and I'll see you when you get there and this is how long you have to get there. Right. And then I'll go figure it out and I'll ask for help if I need it. Um, so that was definitely the hardest part for me was when we originally made that we flattened, we flatlined the accountability chart and I had eight reports and those, the eight departments that had like, you know, teams of three or four. So I did one-on-ones with them all and just, uh, that was a lot. It was too much. <laughs> yeah, what I hear is, you know, it's it's an energy thing, right? It's not that you can't do mm -hmm. it; you can do it, but it's, it's just not it's sustainable. A, it's a, yeah, it's a drain. It's it's not sustainable over over time. Back to the uh, to the assessment itself, the you know, a lot of times visionaries, a lot of times visionaries are the founder, and so they've had to do a lot of stuff to kind of get the company to where it is. So their capabilities are very high; they can do lots of different things. But when you're taking that assessment, what we're really asking you to do is think about what you enjoy what you yeah. love, you know, what energizes you. So from that perspective, you get a much truer, truer yeah. read. So, so Christy, tell us what you see as kind of a, a secret to working effectively with a visionary in general. So you're kind of dialing in on what it takes to be super effective with, with this visionary. What do you think other integrators out there uh, should, should know or be thinking about that's, that are going to help them be more effective with, with their visionary? Yeah, I think for me, there's a lot of things. Um, I think trust is a big one. If you don't have trust, like the conflict's just not going to be there. Like you, it's just impossible. So whatever it takes to build that trust, just know before, until you have that trust both ways, um, you're just not going to get very far. So you might want to like really, really focus there and hone in there. Um, communication is a big deal. So, um, just making sure that that communication is healthy and it's streamlined and, like Houston said, we, I, I think another big piece of it is like having fun and really appreciating what the other person brings to the table so that it's not frustrating. Um, to Houston's point of like the Houston hurricane, 
we name the weird innate things that we have that are, that make us special, but we like name them. So when it's happening, it's like, we can, we can say the buzzword and it's like, okay, I gotta, you know, I gotta relax. I gotta chill out. Um, you know, they're, they're always saying, I'm like the stickler. I'm like the stiff one. And we always call him Houston hurricane. So, um, so it's like having that, that piece of just that trust to call each other out when you're overdoing it and understanding each other's value that brings to the team is a really, really big one. Um, I think that's a, that's a really big piece of it because even when things get hard or things get tense or Houston being a visionary gets really annoying. Sometimes I have to stop and go, this is why my job is so enjoyable is because he does all the stuff I hate to do. And it's like, you know, and I don't want it. I don't want to do it. So it's like that piece of just really appreciating what that person brings to the table. But you can't have any of those things unless you have that really solid foundation of trust and just like shared values. Were you surprised, and this is a question to both of you, when you when you figured out that there was somebody else out there in the world that actually loved to do the things that you hated to do? Mm. Yeah, um, I was. I, 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 I don't think that's something that I learned recently. I remember distinctively, before I even started at 97, coming to the realization that not everyone wanted to be the leader in every group they were in. So for me, my whole life, whether it was like in band, wanted to be the band captain or a pickup team, wanted to be the captain or, you know, lead a you know community group or whatever it is. Like, that's just always something where it's like, put me in the seat and then show me what I need to do to like grow in the seat so I can be like the best person that everyone like, you know, can rely on to like go take what I see and make it a reality. And I think probably in my like mid twenties, I realized uh, for a long time, I just lived my life thinking I was in competition with everyone at all times for that <laughs> seat, you know? So if someone's like, Hey, split into groups and let's, you know, do a project and pick somebody to like lead it and then present it. It's like, in my mind, everyone is competing to figure out how to be that person. And so I remember, you know, maybe like six or seven years ago, really realizing like, Oh man, not everybody wants that. Um, and some people want it in certain aspects, but not in all aspects. And, and in my life, it's, it's not necessarily even to be like the person. It's just to like, it's a new opportunity to test if I can like see something and then get some people to help me make it turn it into a reality because that's very fun for me. So it's not even necessarily like to be seen by others or, or this or that. And so um, one of the reasons why I got into software was to like learn a, a more long-term like career route for me because my background's in real estate. And I just wasn't really a fan of like the transactional stuff and wanted the, I like the recurring revenue and software is a little more scalable and sellable and things like that. And so, um, you know, fairly immediately coming into the company where there wasn't a lot of structure, you know, I've been looking for that. Okay. Who can be my, you know, person that helps me implement. And then, so then when you read EOS, it's like I said, EOS and even reading rocket fuel, the experience I had reading Rocket Fuel was less, oh my gosh, this is revolutionary. I've never thought about it. And it was like, oh my gosh, I can like take all these things I feel and put them into words. And now I'm much more clear on what I'm looking for. And so it's almost like remembered, not learned is a way to put it. Like, obviously there were some things in it that, you know, I learned as well, but it was more or less like, I've been very bad about articulating what I need and what I'm looking for, but I know it's there and I've been looking for it and been frustrated because I can't find it. And then EOS and Rocket Fuel helped me say, oh, this is exactly what I'm looking for. This is exactly the problems. And now I can articulate it more clearly, which is going to give me a better chance to go, like sell that to somebody and get them to buy into to do this with me. Christy, was your experience similar in terms of here's a, here's a label, here's a name to call this integrator thing, which is a collection of things that I love to do and I'm really good at? Um, to a sense, yeah. I, I would say I have always worked under visionaries, like very – very hardcore visionary. So for me, it was a slightly different experience of the integrator seat, not feeling as important, like the leader of the company being a visionary just felt like that was it. And once I realized there was a second piece to it, that was the vital piece of executing was really powerful for me. And I remember talking to my leadership coach about two years ago, and I was talking to him about that. And I was trying to morph my leadership style into that, like, visionary style because that was the example I had in front of me a lot of the times. And he said, there's two things, there's creators and recreators, and neither of them are more important than the other. Like one is the creator, but one takes that, recreates it to make it better and actually does it. 
And that was a big aha for me. Um, so I knew there were, it's almost the opposite. I knew there were people out there to love to do the opposite things for me, but I didn't know there was people out there that love to do the things I like to do. Does that make sense? It was almost like the reverse of that. Yeah, well, it's, um, it's the kind of the, I'm not alone. There's, there's other people yes. out there like me. Right. And there's value to it was a really right. big piece big for me um, of like, oh, I didn't have to be an assistant or, you know, <laughs> be the one that is like getting the things done. Um, or I didn't have to be a manager my whole life. Like, I love management. That's what I'm good at. But I don't want to be a manager my whole life. You know, I, I wanted to, to rise in those ranks. So that was a helpful realization for me of I knew there were a lot of visionaries out there because that, that was most of my experience. Um, but I didn't know there were integrators out there. And it was a value. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Love that. Houston, let me ask you the same kind of question I asked Christy, which is, you know, for other visionaries that are listening, uh, you know, what would you tell them you've kind of learned is, is, a, is a key element to having a super productive relationship with your, with your integrator counterpart? Yeah, so I think um, one is, is understanding how you like to communicate and understand how, uh, like one thing that I've been working on a lot is like one of the things that you give up in leadership is the like convenience of having people communicate to you the way you like to be communicated. And instead you meet people where they are um, in communicating. And that was a really big uh, like realization for me. Like I said, when we were, when I realized the team wasn't on the same page with me, so it's like, I have this vision and I'm not communicating. I'm communicating a way where I understand, but I'm not communicating a way where other people understand. And that was frustrating to me at first because it's like, well, it's so clear to me. Why isn't it clear to you? Like, you know, and, and, and so working with the integrator, I think one is seeing the value of like, you know, you, like I said, part of what working with integrator, like advice to visionaries would be realize that you're not that special, Like there's plenty of people with cool visions out there. And the key to making those visions come into reality, either you don't have, um, and well, not either, like you don't have, and you need somebody to buy into your vision and be able to take those and make them into reality. And that's going to require sacrifices on your part of how you communicate and even how much of your like visionary tendencies you let out at once. Right. And so it's like building that trust of, you know, sometimes I try to rein in and say, okay, cool. Let's get to the same page day. And then I'm going to like, I have all these ideas, but then sometimes it's like, Hey, this is a really bad decision that these people are making independently. And I see a solution and I know this isn't always super helpful, but I need to step in and like unload a little bit of vision and, and, cat and give some problems some solutions to the problems because we can't wait three weeks for me to like get in a room and be hidden from the company and so kind of like getting that balance of when is it appropriate for me to come in and um not overstep the integrators role of like managing and um and so like just really i think for most visionaries that i know it's like you got to get over yourself and realize like you're actually not that special and the secret sauce is having somebody that's willing to implement and do all of that and communicate to the team well that you trust. And so um, that kind of goes to the, like keeping the band together long-term. Like for me, right. I see a lot of value in that because I've tried that for a long time. I feel like we're doing a pretty good job of having a pulse of that. And in my mind, especially after reading books and talking to other VIs and talking to other implementers about that. And, you know, that's what, even what got us to be able to meet you, which I haven't even freaked out about because I love your book and I would love to pick your brain and ask you some <laughs> questions sometimes. Um, but it's like the real valuable thing that I have is having an integrator that can take my vision and knows how to communicate with me to make it a reality. And that's more beneficial to me than a lot of other opportunities that I have in front of me. Love that. Let, let me ask you this. So one of the things, you know, if you think just using sort of the altitude, you know, visualization, you know, visionaries flying at a higher altitude, you know, let's say you're at 30,000 feet and a frontline employee, you know, maybe they're at, you know, 3,000 feet or 300 feet, whatever. You know, there's a pretty big delta there, which is a language thing too. Back to mm -hmm. your why it's the vision is crystal clear to you. It's not crystal clear to them. One of the things that we see is the, the integrator needs to be able to fly close enough to the visionary's altitude to understand their language, right? And a lot of times they play translator then for the rest of the organization. So, so Christy, do you feel that? Do you find yourself sometimes translating Houston's vision in a way that others in the organization can understand it? And what does that look like? Yeah, I would, I would say yes. I think he's really great at painting his vision in a way others understand it. I think what is missing is like the how or how to like how does that person play a part into that vision that's where yeah. i find myself more um 
than translating the vision because he's he's great at communicating his vision well in a simple form but mm -hmm. he's not where i find myself is connecting the dots of like okay person at three thousand feet this is what you do to make sure we right. see this through and then this next person at three thousand this is what you do so um so yeah so yeah in a sense but i'm more for, like that connector me. yeah and, and that, I'm and more, that leads I'm, to the go ahead i was gonna say i'm better at connecting the dots for them of what that means for them if that makes and sense then, and then that, that is how, when they get the question on uh, the organizational checkup, right, on the clarity of the vision, that's what is in their head, right, is understanding what it means for them. Mm -hmm. So that's a, that's a you know, loop we've had to kind of close. Have you seen progress on that, Houston? Oh, yeah, man. I, like one of the most special like, moments of my career was, um, so we, when we did our annual offsite with our leadership team last October, we made it a whole week, so we did two days with the leadership team, and then we brought the managers in for a day for like team building, and then we brought the whole team in. We like two hours away, we rented hotels for everybody. You know, did big dinner, you know, did top golf, and then had a whole Friday where we sat down and we cast the vision for this year with the multiple companies. Even though we didn't, we didn't even know what that looked like yet, right? Because we didn't have the opportunity that we just had in the last month. And I remember talking to the whole team, and everyone's on the same page. Everyone knows where we're going. Everyone's like right seat. Everyone's the right person for that seat. And we had gone through a huge transition with EOS to get there a lot, and a lot of pain. And, I, and so I talked to him. I was like, man, we're on the other side of the tunnel. And I just don't think many companies get here, you know, where, where we're going to come up with things. And, and, you know, and it's just everyone literally is taking the vision and making it bigger. And, like, so now we have to expand our vision to keep high talent. And we're doing all these things. And, you know, that even came into – just like 30 days ago, we took it to our leadership team and said, hey, we have this opportunity. There's a new company. Their founder is stepping down. They wanted me to come run it. I said, hey, I'm EOS till I die. So if you want me to come run it, you, we're doing CEO, COO coming to run it. And we're having two people step in, which is going to be, you know, in their traditional views, like two people doing one job. I was like, but that's, I'm a package deal for this. And they, and, and I didn't think they would say yes. And they ended up saying, yeah, let's do it. Let's try it out. And so I went to the leadership team. I was like, it's not ideal timing. Like we have a lot going on with 97 display. I don't want to do this if this is going to like be seen as a negative light for the company as well. And the leadership team was like, you know, on our three year picture is three separate companies with three separate P and L's in three years. And that three years ends at the end of next year. We have to do this. Like this is the vision that we're going towards. We'll figure out the how later. And that was like really special for me because I kind of got, I kind of regressed into the weeds where I was looking going like at all of the next hundred feet, like how are we going to do this? And I was kind of on the ground level and I took it to them and was struggling. And they were like, Oh no, remember when you were up here, this is where you said two years ago we were going to be. And this is the next step that has to happen. So we're in on this and we'll figure it out later. And that was like a really, that was like a crescendo of, I feel like our company being bought into the same vision because obviously this doesn't impact them as much as it impacts like my workload and, and my absence at 97, you know, part-time at least. Um, and so that was really cool. Yeah, that is, that's a very cool story. So the two of you, I'm, I'm super excited about how well you seem to work together and about how excited you are about each of your respective roles and, you know, and kind of taking that power and, you know, multiplying it, you know, over, over multiple companies. That's a pretty, that's a pretty cool story. So uh, I, I thank you for, for sharing it with me today. And I'm sure there's lots more we could go on for a long time and go off in, in all kinds of directions. Uh, one thing I would ask you is if there's any, anything, uh, you know, if our listeners want to learn more about your companies, uh, learn more about you, uh, what's really the best way for them to, to get in touch? Yeah, I would say um, on socials, we are 97 Display across all platforms. That's a 97 D-I-S-P-L-A-Y. Very cool. Anything Check else before we go? I think that's all for me. Yeah. I think that that's good. Well, thanks so much. Again, I'm super grateful for you, you know, sharing the time with us today and sharing your experience and your cool story. And it's a pleasure for me to, to finally get to meet both of you. So until next time, let's go rock it. 